What's up YouTube? Welcome to Wise Wealth, where we dive into all things personal finance. Today is episode 9 of our Stock of the Week series. In Stock of the Week, we pick a stock for any host of reasons. It may have been in the news recently, a recent earnings report may have been published, or anything else, and we break it down in a video for you. We'll take a look at any recent events that may affect the stock, what its performance has been like, and what we think it will be in the near future. The analysis will go into the financials, what it's trading at, and ultimately, do we think it's a good investment at this point in time? At the end of the analysis, we'll rate the stock out of 10 to give you an idea of it in a quick and easy to understand video, and I hope that it helps you with your own investment decisions. Now, I must caveat this by saying that this is not financial advice and is purely my own thoughts on the stock and intended for educational purposes. I'd always advise doing your own due diligence before investing your own money. So welcome to episode nine. I hope that it'll provide you guys with some value. And if you're new here, then welcome to the channel. If you're looking for content about stock market investing and personal finance, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. So today the spotlight is on Aviva, ticker symbol AV, one of the largest holding companies in the UK. It currently has a £16 billion market cap and is listed on the FTSE 100. They provide a wide variety of services, focusing primarily on insurance products and services, but also retirement and their asset management arm known as Aviva Investors. The company previously had many segments throughout the world in places such as Asia, Poland, France and Italy, but has consolidated into the UK, Ireland and Canada to focus on its core business. This comes after their new CEO, Amanda Blanc, implemented her strategy in an attempt to reduce debt, strengthen the company's financials, and return substantial capital to shareholders. As of this video, Aviva is currently trading at 411 pence per share. Let's take a look at Aviva's financials. As you can see from the breakdown of revenue, profit, and earnings per share, Aviva saw steady, albeit modest growth from 2016 through to the end of 2019. Like most companies, their growth was stunted in 2020 due to the pandemic, but the impact appeared to be minimal, with a less than 3% decline in revenue overall. A drop in earnings per share hampered the share value and a dividend cut effectively reset the growth story for Aviva from a much lower base. This gives investors opportunity to invest now and see a steady rise in both share value and dividend. And there are a few reasons I think Aviva will be very successful in achieving both. As for the share price, Aviva plunged in 2020 and has since recovered to pre-pandemic levels. Investors who loaded up on shares during this time managed to lock in highly attractive yields of nearly 10%, but that doesn't mean that there's been a missed opportunity. Aviva is still trading at a modest valuation of 8.6 price to earnings, lower than comparable equities on the FTSE like legal and general, and much cheaper than US counterparts, where the S&P 500 is comparably much more expensive in general. This isn't pricing in a lot of growth, but it does mean that Aviva offers a highly attractive dividend at over 5%, some of the best returns on the FTSE 100. On top of this, I think this is not pricing in potential growth opportunities Aviva will experience in the coming years, making Aviva undervalued in my opinion. I'll explain why, but first let's look at the dividend. Aviva is one of the most attractive equities for income investors. Its dividend has historically been one of the highest yields on the market. Insurance companies make for great dividend investments. They have a steady stream of income and large cap firms provide strong balance sheets that enable sizable distribution of income to investors through dividends. In 2020, Aviva announced a dividend of 21 pence per share. At the same rate with the current share price, this gives investors a yield of 5%. This annual dividend is effectively a cut because Aviva was planning to pay 30.9 pence per share in 2019 before scrapping its final dividend at the request of the Bank of England at the start of the pandemic. This shows prudent management, as a dividend of that size may have proven unsustainable going forward. We as investors should look for stability over high yielding dividend traps to ensure a steady stream of passive income. This gives Aviva a more robust base to build upon and provide dividend growth in line with profits moving forward. In their annual shareholder report, the CEO stated, we intend to grow our dividend per share by low to mid single digits over time as we grow across our core markets. 
improve efficiency, reduce debt, and associated interest costs. The dividend was well covered at 2.29, which indicates future dividend growth is achievable with similar profits going forward. This is higher than the historical average, which should give investors more confidence, as even with a lower cover, Aviva has managed to distribute dividends to shareholders. Aviva pays out dividends biannually on an interim and final payment date, with the interim typically in October or November, and the final payment date in May. It's also worth saying that a dividend of greater than 5% with such a healthy dividend cover is extremely rare to find on either the FTSE 100 or elsewhere in the markets. In fact, I would challenge anyone watching to find another company with both a 5% dividend yield or greater while also having a dividend cover of greater than two. If you do come up with one, make sure to let me and the rest of us know by commenting it down below. Looking ahead to the future, what are the catalysts that I referred to earlier on that could lead to Aviva experiencing further growth? There are three that I think are key, but I believe the market is only pricing in one of them right now. They are streamlining business to focus on the core and drive growth, maximize shareholder returns through the rebase of a dividend and buybacks, current and future macro trends for both the reflation trade coming out of the pandemic and rising interest rates in the future. We talked about streamlining of the business through several disposals of segments across the world. The business has made huge strides in the CEO strategy, and now it is time to see if it will deliver on growth in the core business, and I think it will. This is the only factor I think the market is currently pricing in. In the recent annual report, the CEO indicated that following the disposal of other business segments, the company will not only use the capital to pay down debt and reinvest for growth, but also return substantial capital to shareholders. This is likely to take place in the form of share buybacks. In doing so, Aviva can boost the earnings per share and drive up the value of shares for existing holders. JP Morgan cited this as one of the key reasons that they resumed coverage on Aviva with an overweight rating and a price target of 510 pence per share. This indicates a potential 24% upside from the current share price. An overweight rating on a stock is another way of indicating that the stock is a buy. Third, the current macro environment means that financials are well positioned to do well in the future. Arguably, it's the safest investment right now. Insurance companies, banks, asset managers have all benefited from the reflation trade. This is essentially investing in companies that were hampered from the pandemic and the economic downturn. As the economy returns to normal, industries such as financials, industrials and travel have seen a shift in sentiment and a sharp rise in value. Aviva falls into this category and will continue to do well as the world transitions out of the stay-at-home trade. Not only will Aviva do well for this reason, but as the economy resumes, the expectation for inflation has also risen. Throughout the pandemic, inflation has remained well below the target rate of 2% set by the Bank of England. This is partly due to the cutting of interest rates which financials suffer from. As inflation expectations rise, we may see inflation exceed 2% for a brief period. As the economy runs hot, maximum employment returns and productivity reaches maximum capacity, inflation could overrun the optimal rate. One of the tools the Bank of England must use to deal with inflation and maintain price stability within the markets is known as contractionary monetary policy. This is where the central bank increases the base interest rate with the goal of reducing inflation by limiting the amount of active money circulating in the economy. In short, financial stocks benefit when interest rates rise. This is because their margin on lending services rises too. In fact, they are one of the few stocks that benefits from rising interest rates. I don't think the market has priced this in, as Aviva is only just trading at pre-pandemic levels. In anticipation of rising rates, investors can look to financials to protect their portfolio against the risk that rising interest rates provide. Other equities such as high growth technology stocks can suffer from rising rates due to the way that companies and cash flows are valued. Looking at the analyst consensus for Aviva, 11 Wall Street analysts have issued ratings and price targets on Aviva in the last 12 months, with seven buy ratings and four hold ratings. Their average 12 month price target is 405 pence per share, suggesting that the stock is fully valued at the minute. However, due to the bullish catalysts I've mentioned previously, I think there's still potential for upside. 
Having looked at the timing of some of these price targets as well, they have come in the mid 2020s where Aviva was still executing their strategy of non-core business disposals. As well as this, the recent upgrade from JP Morgan suggests that further upside potential with the analysts reiterating their buy rating while increasing the price target to 510 pence per share. Looking at the technical analysis, we can see that Aviva has moved up quite significantly in the past six months. This was really initiated by the news of the vaccine breakthrough that triggered a move to value stocks in the so-called reflation trade. Looking at the RSI indicator or the relative strength index, we can see that Aviva approached the overbought stage and pulled back recently. This was actually the date when the stock market went ex-dividend, hence the fall in the share price. The overall market trend is bullish, with the FTSE approaching all-time highs. However, if sentiment shifts or profit-taking takes place, we may see a fall below the 400 mark back into the 300s. This would give us a great entry point, so make sure to be on the lookout for a slight drop in price. For all of these reasons, I would give Aviva an 8 out of 10 and a buy rating. Aviva is well positioned for growth following disposals under the new CEO and market conditions for rising interest rates. The reasons for not scoring higher would be the upside potential at this price. This is mostly due to the rapid run up in share price recently along with the other insurance stocks. And if Aviva does pull back into the 300s, it may prove to be a more attractive entry point. Despite the increase in share price, Aviva is still one of the best dividend stocks on the FTSE 100 with a yield of over 5%. If you're looking at this as a long-term investment like I am, then the current share price shouldn't be of that much concern. If you want to get into Aviva, you could also choose to cost average into the position, investing a portion each month or quarter to average down or up your cost basis. This will protect you from any pullback in the stock or a wider market correction. So that's it for today's video. I hope you got some value out of it. And if you did, please hit the like button as it helps me out. Let me know in the comments below if you have a position in Aviva or are looking to invest having seen this analysis. If you're looking for more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel and remember to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new content. Thanks for watching and until next time, see ya.